Welcome to the Next Up Podcast. In this episode, I had the chance to chill with the regional sales managers, Dan and Patrick from Polar King at their office in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now, as we're all aware of, Polar King has a huge focus and footprint in K-12, which we spoke about, but they also provide refrigeration solutions for other industries and organizations like the Indy 500, zoos, theme parks, and more. Thank you, Polar King, so much for making this episode possible, and I hope you all enjoy listening. Let's get to it. All right, welcome to the Next Up Podcast. I made my way all the way over to Fort Wayne, Indiana to hang out with my two brothers from Polar King. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good, yeah. Great. So you want to start by doing some introductions real quick? Obviously, this is my third time, I think, now interviewing or filming with you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know you, but maybe the people out there don't know you, and they should know you. So who wants to go first? I'll go. Go ahead, Pat. All right. My name is Patrick <laughs> Smith, and uh, I'm a regional sales manager for Polar King. And uh, Dan and I both split education uh, for all 50 states. So if you would ever call into Polar King, he handles half the country. I handle the other half. You're answering all those phone calls for 25 states? We are. (laughs) Just the two of you? We keep busy. Oh, man, that's that's nuts. All right. (laughs) And I'm Dan uh, with Polar King, another regional sales manager. Uh, I've been doing it for about 11 years. And like Pat said, cover the other 25 states. Okay, so who has which coast? I we, have the East Coast for the most part. Yeah. Oh, so you guys kind of like sprinkle in some states in between there too? Exactly. Yeah. All right. That's typ- typically how it goes with most sales departments, so I totally get it. Yep. <laughs> most of the East Coast, and then I have Washington and Oregon. I don't get that, but. Hey, but it works, right? It works. Yep. It works. Yep. I've been dying to go to Oregon. I haven't been out there ever, and I hear it's beautiful. It is. Yeah? What's your favorite uh, place to visit in Oregon? Um, I guess I was in Portland. I'm not sure the little cities around there, but mm-hmm. that whole area is pretty amazing. Ah, uh, cool, cool. Yeah, I, it's on my list next year to find a find a job to do out in Portland so I can go and visit. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Patrick, tell me a little bit about uh, about Polar King. What are you guys all about? Yeah. So the number one thing we do is we manufacture seamless fiberglass walking coolers and freezers, and um, like I said, Dan and I handle education segment, but we also do a lot of other segments as well, government. Uh, municipalities, uh, city, county, federal, state government, all that stuff. Cool, cool. So do you guys cover or do you handle colleges and and universities also? We do. Oh, neat, neat. Okay. All right. So uh, what would a school district typically acquire from you guys? Right. It's different and it's set up for, it's, I guess it's different for every school system, how they're set up. Um, We do a lot of just small one-off projects. And then we have a lot of school systems, and Dan can probably speak better to that, where they call in and they've got, um, you know, hey, we're going to start working on replacing this area that they cover. Uh, Dan does, like like we mentioned earlier, does a lot of work in, in Florida. Yeah, speaking of Florida, we recently had some storms come through. Yep. And just out of curiosity, do you guys provide solutions for school districts suffering from getting hit by a hurricane? We do. Um, all of our walk-ins are Miami-Dade approved which is the most stringent code in Florida. So we can put them anywhere in the state of Florida outside. They've been through many hurricanes. Um, They've all seemed to survive. A little fix here and there, but for all intents and purposes, they're there ready to go. So what is it about the Miami-Dade certification that makes it so much more difficult to achieve than other certifications? Yeah, they just hold a higher standard so it'll survive a hurricane. So we had to send... Um, our walk-in off to be independently tested and they had to meet all their stringent code 185 mile an hour wind code um, missile Mm. impact there's a bunch of you just say missile impact yeah they actually shoot two by fours i believe at the (laughs) walk-in to see how it would penetrate it'd be neat to go see i was gonna say when can i when can we go and do that (laughs) yeah but yeah it, it survived all met all the code and like i said we can put them anywhere in the state of florida and as things progress each state or each county kind of falls back on we want it Miami-Dade approved, even though that doesn't technically have to be, but they want it to <clears throat> meet that standard. All the Gulf Coast pretty much, they want Miami-Dade code. Even Orlando, believe it or not, wants Miami-Dade code. So That is wild. It's It can withstand a missile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck on the missile, guys. Sorry. <laughs> a two-by-four missile. A two-by-four oh, missile. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. 
And to expand on what Dan just said, too, when there's hurricanes in an area like that, our solution is uh, we've had a lot of school systems that buy, let's say, an 8 by 20 trailer. They might split it half cooler, half freezer. So when they do have areas that go down, they keep those at central locations, and they can kind of send those out to the schools that are down. They also have freestanding units, and then we have a sister company, Polar Leasing, that can also – they do rentals. So okay. they would rent units to the school system until they got up and running. Cool. Um, how long does it take typically to uh, receive a unit once you order it? Um, we've been telling people 12 to 16 weeks, but um, we've been running closer to the 10 to 12 week. And if it's a smaller kind of a standard size unit, 8 to 10. Yeah, That's not bad at all. No, it's really come down there for a while during the height of COVID. It was stretching out to that 12 and 16 week, but it's all <clears throat> seems to be coming back. And what are the different types of units that you guys have available? Cooler, freezer, either or. A uh, combination, part cooler, part freezer. Actually, we can do as many compartments as the customer needs. Dry storage, cooler freezer, two coolers and a freezer. And then dual temp, which the entire box can be set as a cooler or a freezer. And that's more like Pat said for trailers, for emergency backup. So if your cooler goes down, you can set it as a cooler. If your freezer goes down, you can set the thermostat as a freezer. So it's kind of like having two in one. Okay. And are you guys custom building these? We are. Every unit um, to whatever size the customer needs. So if they need to a six by eight, we start as small as a six by eight and then go up from there. So if you've got a unique area that has to go into, we can say it's eight foot by eight foot, six inches by whatever that length is, whatever the width is. Wow. Okay. Um, so talk to me about the actual process of building one of these units. What does that look like? Yeah, so luckily Pat and I don't do that, <laughs> <laughs> but all the hard workers out in the plant do. But basically um, we get engineered drawings that the customer will review and we'll tweak it till we get exactly what they need, where the door goes, how the swing is. And then our shop builds it based off of those drawings <clears throat> to meet the customer needs. And like I said, eight to ten weeks to build it, another couple of weeks to ship it right now. That's impressive. That is really impressive. Man. So I'm assuming you guys have some sort of energy star rating because everybody wants to save electricity these days. And, and how are you guys doing that with your units or are you doing it? We currently are not energy star rated. Okay, so I used but, the wrong terminology, but you guys are energy efficient, which is what I should have said. <laughs> no, that's all right. We're actually one of the most efficient units on the market. And what, what creates that or what causes that is our um, you know, what we build the unit out of, the seamless fiberglass with the polyiso uh, insulation on the interior of the unit. Okay, cool. Yep. And you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and just there's no Energy Star rated walk-ins out there. They're held to a different standard. AWEF, I believe, and then the Energy Independent Act is what walk-in manufacturers have to. Gotcha. Yep. Well, thank you for educating me and yep. everybody else out there <laughs> listening. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so talk to me about some success stories that you guys have had with districts from around the country. Do you guys have any for me? Uh, yeah. Um, like we said, I, I do really well in the state of Florida. Uh, Brevard County is probably one of my biggest customers. Every year uh, they replace two to four walk-ins so I'll go down there and um, they get rid of the old walk-in and we bring in a, a polar king and they're also usually doing a kitchen remodel full remodel and this is part of the package but um, Florida schools in general Pasco County Hernando County oh yeah Pasco I'm from Pasco yeah <laughs> great people um, just did a big project in Osceola County schools okay um, they're doing kind of a central warehousing type application so they bought four of our bigger walk-ins and potentially two more. Those are just delivered two weeks ago, I believe. Okay. Wait, two weeks ago, like before the hurricane? Correct. They got them just in time then, huh? Yes. Wow. Good for them. Yep. Good for them. So what, what about you? I'm actually fairly new to the school industry. So oh. with, within about two years uh, is the time frame that I've kind of taken over. But, yeah, I've done multiple multiple uh, walk-ins for multiple school districts now. Mm -hmm. California is starting to take off for me personally. Um, I'm just trying Bakers Bakersfield, California is one segment for me. That's really, uh, I think we've sold them four, and we're working on our fifth unit for them right now, probably in the last six months. Okay. So, yep, that's really taken off for me. So what does the process look like? Let's say 
I'm a school district and I need a walk-in cooler. Yeah. It really is different for every school system. So I may have a smaller school system that calls me. A, um, they might even be a director at that school. And I'll walk through the process with them. Uh, and then they're giving me authority just to make that purchase. Um, and then another school system, school system may have a superintendent that would call me, uh, get into contact with them and the director. Once in a while, some school system gets an architect involved just so that they can make sure they're covering all their bases. Mm-hmm. And it's different for every city, state municipality there's different what do I want to say different compliances that they have to meet I guess yeah that's that's a really good point because every school district is different whether they're city-based county-based whether they have four schools or 400 schools mm-hmm. all right. the needs are different and the way you have to communicate with them is different it's it's a challenge so hats off to you guys for covering half the country each and having to learn how to <laughs> communicate with all these different types of districts because it's not easy you know it's not in like Pat said, some of them are, we call them freestanding walk-ins, where they literally are brought, set in the middle of a parking lot, off the side of the parking lot. <clears throat> and it's pretty simple what size, make sure it fits, drop it, hook power to it. Other ones are attached to the building. Those are a little more in-depth. You got to make sure it fits, that everything lines up. Architects often get involved in that. But uh, we do site visits, so I go to <clears throat> Brevard every year and me along with the school and then whatever contractors doing it, usually the architects there as well, do measurements. So when we build it, the door will line up with the hole in the building. I'm not going to say there's never been a case where <laughs> we've been an inch or two off and it causes some headaches and people running around, but we try to eliminate that as much as possible. And it always works out, but yeah, um, you got to make sure you read that tape right because yeah, yeah. <laughs> once it's there, it's ready to, to be installed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you guys a silly question. Um, with one of your outdoor units, can I just run an extension cable to it to power it up, or do you have to get special electric to make it work? Yeah, well, the gauge of the gauge of the power cord is mm-hmm. pretty heavy duty because okay. the amp draw on all of it. So a smaller cooler, you may be a 20 amp service, but then some of the freezers, you're going to be 30 amp. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you've got a huge one, it can get up to 60 amp or something like that. But in that case, you're a thousand square feet, and it's a yeah, uh, a warehouse type situation. <laughs> Massive, yeah. <laughs> and you want it hardwired, not plug in. You yeah. don't need someone, yeah, tripping was, over it and unplugging it or something. I was more or less thinking for like emergency setups, mm-hmm. like just need it for a couple of days, real quick or something like that. They could do that, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, now let's say I am working in a huge school district, even a small one. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm all about branding my program. Can I actually wrap? One of my outdoor coolers? Absolutely. Yep. Will you guys do it for me? We have done it in the past. I think we kind of lean towards uh, helping the customer with artwork, that Mm -hmm. type of thing. But more so, if they contact someone local, there's less of a case of damage while in transit or while we're offloading that. Okay. And the guy's local to to fix it. Probably saves saves some money, too. And I've had schools actually have a contest where... I don't know what they had to do, but the winner got to paint the side of the walk-in with the school logo and emblem and all that. So it was yeah. pretty cool. I've actually, I've, I have seen districts do that now that you mention it. I was um, visiting with Lee County, and I don't think it was an outdoor freezer or anything like that or refrigerator, but they actually had a student contest to wrap some outdoor equipment. It was pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, they got a great response from it. And other, wrapping, other than wrapping the whole unit, too, we've had some people just do like a logo, something like that that can just be set right in place on top yeah. the side or nice yeah. and we'll uh paint the walk in any one color so if they want it to match the building they just send us the paint palette number okay and then we also do some fake finishes uh brick finish veneer uh siding looking so if nice. they really want it to blend in we can do whatever they need so it doesn't look like a walk-in that's awesome yeah. talk to me about warranties what kind of warranties do you guys offer on your units uh, 12 years on the structure, and that includes the floor, roof, and door, um, five years on the compressor, and then a year on everything else. Okay. And what does that process look like if someone wants to reach out to you because they're having some sort of issue? Let's let's say two by four that was going 200 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Way through the side of the cooler. In the side. <laughs> yeah. They would just simply, they can always reach out to Dan or myself, um, or the fastest, quickest way, I always just tell people, reach out to service at polarking.com, and when they email you, they e- when they send an email to that address, it, it copies everyone, um, management, 
as well as the service team. And that way there's a, a bigger, broader view of people that are yeah, being informed. Go straight to the top all the way to management. Yep, that's that's right. great. You guys don't mess around. Yeah, and then we hire a local service company to come out and work on it if it's refrigeration related, um, if it's structure related, which doesn't really happen that much, luckily. We send a, a crew from here out to repair it. Okay. And um, all right, so Polar King seems to me to be almost like a house of brands. Like there's a bunch of different entities under the Polar King name, right? There are. Do you guys want to kind of just run through what those are? Because I know you mentioned Polar Leasing earlier, but aren't there a couple other ones too? Yep. So Polar King is where the manufacturing and, and sales side of things. And then we have Polar Leasing, which is the rental side. And then we have Polar King Mobile, which is a newer entity, and they do uh, three different size, three different size <laughs> trailers, not four. Three. Got that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> three different size trailers, uh, six by eight, six by ten, and six by twelve. Okay, and mobile like mobile trailers, like pull them around type of trailers. Yeah, bumper hitch trailers that you can hook up to your truck and then haul to your site. Yep. Okay, and if one of those three standard sizes don't work. Then we'll custom build, and I hate using the word custom because it sounds expensive, but we'll build any size they need or if they need a different um, option on it. Like mm -hmm. a lot of schools like ramps or the <clears throat> combo part, we'll build that for them. Generator packages. Is the mobile, I guess, cooler? Is that something new? Because I, I don't think I've seen many of those anywhere up we've until you guys it, mentioned it. Yeah, we've been doing it basically since the beginning but the polar king mobile is just a couple years old where they're really focusing on those three sizes they sell them through trailer dealers <clears throat> to get that mobile refrigeration system out there okay and how does the uh how does the leasing work yeah so polar leasing rents eight by tens and eight by twenties um they've got depots all over the u.s uh you would call into our 1-800 number um and I don't know what that one eight hundred number is. I don't know. For Polar, Polar Leasing. leasing. <laughs> They're a sister company. <laughs> Google you can is your Google friend. PolarLeasing.com. <laughs> that number will be, uh, you know, on their website, and then it'll direct you to the locus, the uh, I guess the closest depot. Yeah, and they even have a little um, rental calculator where you can put in your zip code, which size you want, how long you want it, and it'll give you a pretty accurate estimate. Okay, so I can literally, like, if I'm throwing, like, this big party and I need freezer space, I can just go to Polar Lease again go first Google the number. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, so tell me, what do you guys love about your jobs the most? Sure. I, yeah. We're both, we both have sales background in, in different industries, but I like meeting new people and just meeting their needs and and. And following through, a lot of people over-promise and under-deliver. Mm -hmm. We'd rather under-promise and over-deliver, yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. But we do. We meet a lot of people, not only in education, but a lot of other industries. And uh, still have some connections with people. So when we are traveling, we can call them up and meet. And it's yeah. nice. That's nice. What about you? Yeah, same thing. People, um, like Pat said, I've been in sales. Did 15 years of food service sales. So it was building relationships with customers. So this was kind of different. Unfortunately, there's a lot of customers that they buy one walk-in and hopefully it'll last them a lifetime if they're a small restaurant. So you don't build that great of a relationship, but that's one of the reasons I like schools and some of the other industries I do, um, zoos, aquariums, because they have a repetitive business. So you actually get to meet them, yeah. know them, help them solve their needs. That's pretty that's, neat. That sounds neat. So speaking of relationships, you guys held a uh, symposium recently, right? We did. What was that all about? We did, and that was actually our first ever symposium here at Fort Wayne. Um, we reached out. I believe you helped reach out. I mean, yeah. Our marketing department <laughs> reached plug. out. That's right. <laughs> you did a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had, we actually had a, a, a large group of people. Was the exact, what was the exact number? Like 22? I think, I think we had around 20, 20 or 22, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, and and they all, all over the country. Yeah, and they came in. Uh, ha had a time just to sit down and, and talk with people and have dinner, break bread with people and get mm -hmm. to know people. That was nice. Uh, and then we came back to the plant and had a uh, a day long of uh, plant tour. And we put on a little presentation of what we do. Mm -hmm. And then I know we had some architects or some um, consultants that came in mm -hmm. and, and talked as well. And then I think Aaron, uh, our chef here, put on a uh, – 
the serve safe program yeah or a portion of that serve safe program too but uh definitely made some great relationships during that yeah that's what it's all about that neat yeah i like i love um i love this space that we the three of us get a chance to work in in k-12 because relationships are so important mm-hmm. and getting a chance to build them at events like that is honestly it's a blessing so i was happy to be a part of it help you guys yeah. put that together it was a and good it time. was neat because the way it fell i think three weeks or maybe a month after the national sna show in colorado mm-hmm. and i can i can guarantee everyone that was here made a point to stop by the booth just to say hi it was like we have new friends now and some of them were so excited to come up and see us and we saw a few walking around in denver yeah um had a cocktail or two with a couple of them but there you go uh it was great just to see them walk by and you can wave at them because they know who you are you know who they are that mm-hmm. was pretty cool yeah it, it was it was neat because that was the first time we, we had actually done a round table discussion at the end mm-hmm. and seeing you guys have the opportunity to speak to these directors like not only as a group but almost like one on one, that was it was great. Like yeah. I, I felt like mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. it was neat. It was definitely worth doing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how was A and C for you guys? It was really good. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Made some good connections. Absolutely. Networked some bit. Yeah, and I would say a majority of the people that were at the symposium stopped by our booth and and uh, complimented us and thanked us and they had a great time while they were here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys enjoy doing the uh, national shows like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that one's a really good show. I I look forward to doing that one every year. And you guys go to other shows too, right? Like even outside of K twelve, do you mm-hmm. guys have NAFM also? Yep, yep. we do NAFM NRA. Um, next week will actually be the AZA show, the zoo show in Columbus. So what's that like? It's pretty neat, um, and it's it's amazing. Um, I do that segment. They need food for people that come into the park, you know, burgers, mm-hmm. fries, all that kind of stuff. But then animals get fed better than most humans the, their diets are so specific and wow they go out of their way to make sure they get the top of the line food so it needs to be stored at temperature as well so that is pretty so cool. wild so all right so out of outside of k-12 what are your favorite sectors to work in my favorite is zoos yeah just they're great people I guess if I had to do it over, maybe I'd be a marine biologist or something <laughs> like Kramer or not Kramer George from <laughs> Seinfeld. But <laughs> that's right. Uh, I just like those people. They're down to earth, great people to work with. Yeah, um, you can build relationships with them because they need multiple walk-ins. Um, so I'd say between zoos and schools, or neck and neck on which one I really prefer. Really, what about you, Pat? Yeah, I do a lot of work with military as well. So. Uh, just like Dan said, we establish those relationships and I have people, I've been with the company oh, just about 10 years and they, you know, they call me on an annual basis and say, all right, we need, we need one of these now. We need two of these. Or, yeah. uh, and there's a big demand. So obviously for a military to support them too. So is, are the military standards for food service similar to schools? Mm-hmm. Do you know? Yep. That's, that's what I keep hearing here. It's very similar. So it, pretty much if you can do one, you have a pretty good shot at doing the other too. Exactly. They kind of fall right in the same realm. Yeah. So do you get a chance to travel to, like, bases, uh, like, outside of the country? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Where have you been? Oh, I take that back. Not outside of the country. Okay. Inside the country, yeah. Okay. San Diego is a big one. Uh, several here in Indiana, Texas. Texas is kind of a big hub. I will be down in uh, Huntsville, Alabama in a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah. Are you working with a particular branch of the military or just all of it? All of it, yep. Wow. That sounds interesting. Navy, Marines. There's some. There are some cool bases. I bet. Um, and some neat things to see. So tell me, what's Area 51 like? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there yet, but please call me. It's I'd on the be- list. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, is it easier to sell into military than in than in schools? It's about the same. Really? Yep. It's hmm. just uh, when they're reaching out, just kind of developing that relationship relationship with them, and then helping them with their need. Yeah. And being responsive. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Being responsive. Absolutely. I always tell my kids that when we're out. Service is dead. <laughs> Fast food <laughs> restaurants. I think everybody can relate with that. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you guys work with restaurants, too? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Uh, any big chains that you can talk about or any? Um, I, Pat, neither Pat nor I, unfortunately, cover the national chains, but okay. we do um, quite a bit with Starbucks, um, Captain D's. Bojangles, oh wow, they're kind of a regional. They're my favorite, so that's why I like to bring them up. Uh, I've never Dairy been to Bojangles. What's like? What are they all about? 
uh, they're Zaxby's Popeye competition. Okay. I just think they're the best. They're down south, um, Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas. You know, what What do you think makes them the best? Their let's, spice. Let's, let's on, dive in. Yeah. <laughs> their sides are incredible. Their chicken strips are called Supremes, and they are. Um, I don't know what spices are on there, but yeah. they're phenomenal. Um, and then they're known for their bow berry biscuit. A bow berry biscuit. It's like a, I think it's blueberry or some sort of berry biscuit, and it's got icing on it. It's great for breakfast when you're traveling at the airport. Um, I think it's T-Terminal in Atlanta that the Bojangles is at. Oh, man, you're making me hungry. It's it's worth trying. One. All right, so if I'm going for the first <laughs> time, what am I going to order? Tell oh, berry biscuit. Okay. Sweet tea. Yeah. And then the supreme three or four meal, depending on how hungry you are. All right. Is it a, a white meat or dark meat? They're strips. You oh, can get um, bone-in chicken as well. I just never do. Okay. I'm sure it's awesome. Yeah. I like the red beans and rice. And I can't remember the other side I always get. It might be slaw. Mm. Man, I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. Are there any up here? <laughs> no. Oh, man. I think Tennessee is the closest. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I'll, I'll be there in a couple months, actually. There you go. Yeah. It's definitely. And like I said, going through Atlanta, there's two there. So. Oh, I'm in and out of Atlanta all the time. And yep. I see it all, I see it there all the time, too. So if Bojangles is listening, we can get some free <laughs> Bowberry biscuits. Send us some samples. <laughs> uh, so do you guys um, you guys travel a lot, I'm assuming? Flying, driving, what do you guys do? A little of both. A little yep. both? We'll be driving to Columbus just because it's so close, but most of the time. If it's over... Five hours? Yeah, maybe? that's kind of depends. It, yeah, it's yeah. up to us. <clears throat> we were lucky; they kind of leave our travel to us. Mm -hmm. um, don't abuse it; they won't say anything. Yeah. Have uh, you guys had any any issues with flights lately? No. I went through torture for like <laughs> three weeks straight going through Atlanta. It was brutal. Just canceling, canceling flights. flights. Yep. yep. One one time for work, once with the family, two trips back to back. Sent my bags to the wrong state. It was. Mm -hmm. It was a nightmare. And I just heard there was a big thing with United today. Every United flight, United no or American, way. was grounded due to a software issue or something. Oh man, that's brutal. That is brutal. Yeah, luckily I flew in Southwest today. <laughs> Got here right on time. No, but my uh, it was maybe three trips ago. I was going to Nacuffs, um in Baltimore, and I had a late flight, and I was connecting in Atlanta at like eleven o'clock. But my flight out of Tampa was delayed an hour and a half sitting on the tarmac. And then we finally take off. We land in Atlanta and then we're sitting on the tarmac again for like another hour. And then I'm, at this point, I'm like, OK, well, I missed my flight. But then I saw that flight got delayed, too. So I was like, oh, I actually have a chance. Um, so I sprint over to my gate, which, of course, is all the way on the other side of the airport. Finally get there. I get there right before the door closes, and then we sit on that plane for an hour and a half, and then they cancel the flight. And at this point, it's like one in the morning, and I have I've never seen anything like it. Like when I got off of the flight, it was like the apocalypse had just happened. There were people walking around like zombies, sleeping on the ground. People were like fighting with each other. It was the wildest thing. Hmm. And then of course, all the trams are down, and the elevators were broken. <laughs> it took forever to find a Lyft or an Uber. All the hotels were sold out. It was an absolute nightmare, but it made a cool story, though. Yeah. It was all for the experience. It was, it was all right. We've had a couple of those experiences in the past. Detroit yeah. for eight hours just to get to Boston or Philly. Or Oh, man. Mm. But I have to say, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't had that many cancellations. I mean, I've been traveling for work for probably like the last eight or so years, and I've only had maybe two, maybe three flights canceled on me. Yeah. So. Not too bad. Not too bad. So other than the uh, the zoo show, what do you guys have next? We've got IAPA in November, which is an amusement park show down in Florida. Man, I'm working in the wrong industry. <laughs> you know what? If you're in, I know you live down there. Yeah. We can get you in. It's the neatest show to go to. So anyone that supplies anything to an amusement park comes there. So you got engineers that do roller coasters and all that stuff. The people that sell the tickets are there. Yeah. All the junk prizes you get. But any new ride, any new video game, um, they're all there and you can do them for free. They let people 
it's one of the few shows that kids are allowed in. So there's kids running around, really getting on all the rides. And I have kids. There you go. <laughs> we can get you passes to where, it. It's where is it and when? Orlando in November, the week before Thanksgiving, whatever that. Falls okay. On. So it's like a Tuesday through Friday. That sounds like fun. Is it at like Disney or something? Or no, it's at the Orange County Convention Center. Really? They oh. just set all their rides and stuff up. There's out outdoor section with bouncy houses and things you jump off on and that sounds like a lot of fun it's if you an, guys do have passes i will take you up on them yeah. <laughs> we do i've had customers come just yeah like it's a like a little mini free day at an amusement park so all right so from my world i i'm i understand that at these conferences like you have like the whole networking events and like nightlife and all that stuff mm -hmm. is it the same at this conference like it's like a carnival during the day in a way or yeah amusement park then at night it's like a, like a typical networking event yep and then they do have uh different tours disney usually is involved and they'll have people go there and see different things i think there's a big thing at sea world this year okay um, <clears throat> that you can get tickets to go and see how it operates and stuff but and then the local parties and different vendors have an event Cool. I, and be, I'm going to ask you this because I know you're in Florida a lot and you do deal with theme parks, but do you guys work with Busch Gardens or Adventure Island also? Yep, absolutely. Man, you guys are everywhere. <laughs> That's just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and that and that show is for, like he said, Disney's there, all the, the huge ones, Cedar Fair, all these companies that are very large and very well known, but then all the way down to, you know, Bill's Blow Ups, who has one location and <laughs> rents yeah. his blow up things and they're there. And it, it is cool. That, that's yeah, it's awesome. neat. A lot of uh, Asian um, theme parks and that come there, apparently. They also do an uh, Asian show. We never go to it or whatever, but yeah. like so Pat like said, you get the top-level Disney Bush Garden executives there to the backyard carny guy that drives around and does <laughs> the local county yeah. fairs, and they're just as nice, and they need stuff too, but just to see that spread of – need there is pretty cool i never really thought about refrigeration and how big the need is for it like you guys work with literally or you can work with li literally any company out there mm -hmm. any company Ooh, you guys should do some stuff with the colts that'd be cool and get out there it would be wouldn't it we do oh well, excuse me <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> actually um, it's through a different company that supplies the food service for them but yeah we do a lot of stadiums wow man you guys race, pretty race tracks. Race track. Yep. Hey, since we're in Indiana, tell me about the Indy 500. I've always wanted to go. Have you guys ever been? I, I have. have been. All right. Got to do it. Have to do it. Got to check it off the list. Yep. Just a million plus people hanging out, watching a race. <laughs> <laughs> and rumor has it, and I can verify it, but I believe that's how polar leasing came to be. The people at the track needed walk-in refrigeration. And at that time, it was just the Indy 500. They didn't do the NASCAR race and stuff. But they only needed it for a month. So being a local company, somehow they contacted us and said, we need these, but we only need them for a month or two months or whatever. So that was kind of the first rental, from what I was told. Wow. It was at the Indy 500. That is cool. That is really cool. All right, so I'm going to ask you a really dumb question. So excuse my ignorance. What is the difference between Indy cars and Formula One, or are they the same? Formula One, yeah, I, I'm not an expert on it. I watched the Formula One show on Netflix, the series. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They're a lot more expensive, and the teams have more control over, like the Alfa Romero car is different than the Mercedes car. Indy car, they're all the same car, different engine, but they're all set up exactly the same. Gotcha. Back in the day, they used to be different, but now it's the Indy car and then with different engines in them. Cool. I had no idea. The Indy cars just turn left, right? The yep. <laughs> <laughs> they do a couple of road courses, but for all, yeah, they're tracks. Have you been to the uh, F1 race down in St. Pete, the street no, race? No, but I want to go. I hear it's a lot of fun. And I... So if you're bored and you watch that Netflix series, it's mm -hmm. pretty neat. I always thought, man, if I had the money to travel to all the cities that they go to, because they go all over the world, and it's always the big cities you want to go to. Mm -hmm. I said, man, that would be awesome. And uh, a friend of mine 
said, yeah, I Googled it or whatever. Some already figured out it's only like 35,000 to follow them for the year. Yeah. Only 35,000. <laughs> I, hey, I feel like it would be a really um, efficient and wise idea to book your sales calls around these races. Exactly. I mean, just come to St. Pete and work with Pinellas County Schools while the race is going on. Go to Chicago when, when the race is happening there. I mean, why not? Yep. <laughs> so in November in Las Vegas, right? That's Formula One. I know it's in Vegas. I don't know when. Yeah, I, I think like it's I said, I don't follow it that the close. first time in Vegas, but it's going right down the strip. And uh, we were just there for a pizza expo. I heard that was cool, too. It was. Yeah. It was very cool. All right. So, you know, I just got an email about an opportunity in Vegas in November. Do you guys want to go? <laughs> <laughs> we're in. <laughs> uh, so what was the pizza show like? It's uh, like pizza from like every everywhere, from every one, right? Exactly. From all over the nation. And then there's a big there's a big show uh, in Vegas, and that's an annual show every year. But there's also one in Chicago. Uh, we were at the one in Vegas this year, and and uh, same type of thing. Anywhere from somebody who's got you know 12 chains to you know somebody who has just has one location, and every kind of pizza you can think of is there. What was the uh, strangest pizza that you tried while you were there? I can't even I can't even <laughs> think of what it was, but and any kind of topping. Yeah. Unique stuff. That's but neat. I'm more of just a... Uh, pepperoni guy? Pepperoni. Meat lovers. Give me the meat the lovers. Meat lovers, <laughs> yep. My, my my kids will only eat cheese pizza, and it drives me crazy. I'm like, you got to give me some, some some more meat or something. Like, just cheese. Like, I'll order a pepperoni. They're picking up all the pepperonis. I'm like, guys, it's a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. So my daughter went from, like you said, cheese only. Now she wants pepperoni. But she doesn't want to eat the pepperoni. She wants to pick it off so it has a little pepperoni <laughs> grease taste to it. Pepperoni residue. <laughs> yeah. So that's coming for you. Uh, it's, uh, kids are kids are so funny. So funny. Or they have Impossible Pizza with the gluten-free uh, cauliflower crust with the imitation yeah, I'll, beef chicken. I'll, I'll take a regular pizza. 3D <laughs> no printed <offense>. meat. <laughs> 3D <laughs> printed meat. Although I did. So one of my friends, she, uh, she has a meat alternate company out there and it's like a beef crumble. And that actually does taste good on pizza. I was surprised. It was, it was okay. It was good. Interesting. Yeah. And there's a, a local restaurant here that has a cauliflower crust. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you didn't know it was cauliflower crust, you wouldn't know it. And I order it all the time, not for the health reasons, which mm-hmm. I should, but the flavors that they have in that crust that they make are phenomenal. Yeah, really? So, yeah. Does it actually like taste like bread? It does. Like I said, I wouldn't know, and it's got herbs and spices mixed oh, wow. in with it, but garlic. Neat. It's thin crust, so you don't get a lot of it, so maybe that's part of the reason you don't know it's cauliflower, but yeah. it's it's really good. How do, you, how do you guys feel about deep dish pizza, like Chicago deep dish? Is it actually pizza, or is it something else? It's pizza. I think it's pizza. <laughs> I think it's delicious. I love it. Yep. <laughs> I'm from New York, so, what, so if I talk to my friends from New York that are all about their pizza, they get offended. But deep dish pizza, I, it's something special. I like them both. I like the mix. Exactly. Yeah. Depends what kind of mood I'm in. <laughs> and now there's, what, Detroit pizza that you put the sauce on last or something? Oh, or? I haven't had that yet. Yeah, it's a new thing out there, Detroit pizza. Oh, wow. They're trying to stake their claim. Well, you look at that. It's got an email <laughs> to go to Detroit, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So uh, any last bits of wisdom you want to share regarding Polar King, what you guys do, how you, why you love to serve? Give me something. Yeah. Um, I think, like we mentioned, no project's too big or too small. Um, we build each and every one to order. A lot of people think custom. I don't like using that word because usually they think it's going to um, be more expensive. And usually you are a little bit more, but you're getting exactly what you need. Instead of calling someone else and this one's close, you can make it work. We'll build you exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, door placement, size, refrigeration, whatever you need, we'll build it. And Pat and I love doing it, working with the customer. The walk-in, doing all that, whatever, but helping the customer meet their need, fulfilling their need. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I just and if someone's on the fence of I don't know if I should call these guys, call us. We'll just talk you through the process. Uh it doesn't cost you anything to get a quote and a drawing and we're happy to put that together for you so you can look at it and ha- really have an understanding of what we do. So I have a nerdy question to ask you now. Uh because you got me thinking. Have you guys ever considered um using 
3D animation or virtual reality to demo one of your, I guess, quote unquote, custom builds? Yes, yeah. we've done, we've dabbled in it. They wanted to do a virtual, or they thought about doing a virtual reality where you wear the headgear. Yeah. And, but we had a, <coughs> excuse me, a video where you could tap on stuff and the door kind of. would open and you could go into another room. I don't know whatever happened to that. It was kind of in the infancy, so it wasn't yeah. great, but it was neat. But for trade shows, instead of us shipping a walk-in, they were thinking of Ship having a... Yep. Yeah. We, we still like the idea, and we still do. I would say 90% of our trade shows that we attend, we ship an actual unit to, mm -hmm. just because people like to bang on the walls oh, yeah. and kick the door. And I've actually banged on some of those walls yeah. at the trade shows. <laughs> Especially <laughs> if you've never seen one. They're used to the metal panel box that... Yeah, you want to see touch and feel that fiberglass to see the difference. Yeah, cause, I mean, I was just thinking like if I was going to build a custom unit and I needed like certain sections that did certain things like you know, hot, or cool or frozen or like dry storage, whatever it is, for me, I think it'd be easier to like fully immerse myself in some sort of metaverse type <laughs> type <laughs> demonstration rather than looking at it on a as on like a wow brain fart um the blue paper uh. Yeah, blueprint. Or blueprint, yeah, yeah, blueprint. It's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, I'm more, they, of a, I'm more of a hands-on and a visual person. So if I can see it, touch it, feel it, then I'm like, okay, I'm not, yeah, I have a better understanding than just a piece of paper. Yeah, but even think about like shipping a head unit to a school district so that food service director can share or pitch it to their superintendent or business manager or something like that. I mean, that's seems kind of cool to me. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen, well, I want to say thank you so much for having me here, for being amazing hosts and for everything that you guys do in all the industries that you uh, that you work in. And especially thank you for these, these uh, the theme park yeah. passes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Seriously, if you're going to be around, definitely call. I'll be around. All right. Thank you, guys. Perfect. Yep, thank Thanks you. Marvel.